Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. Before we get into my usual spiel about the review that I'm going to be doing today, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to each and every one of you who have been watching my videos and dropping some likes and comments. I've had a really fun time talking to you guys and thank you for helping me reach 100 subscribers. I know in the grand scheme of things that's pretty small, but I just appreciate every single one of you who have decided to subscribe to my channel and join my little corner of the internet. <laughs> So once again, thank you so much for watching and liking and subscribing. I really, really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get into this review. So I just watched Ozark season three. Let's talk about it. So full disclosure, I only started watching this series last week. <laughs> uh, I've been meaning to watch it for a while now. And when I saw that season three was coming out, I thought that would be the perfect time to binge watch the entire thing in a week. So whilst I do have a ton of thoughts about season one and season two, we're only going to be focusing on season three for this review. Although I might make some reference to the previous seasons because they're so fresh in my mind. But for the most part, we're sticking to season three. And of course, this is going to be a spoiler review. And I have a feeling it's going to be a lengthy one. So grab a snack. <laughs> so when it comes to the main premise of this show it's not entirely unique. We have seen this kind of show before. You know this middle class family that stumbles across the world of organized crime. A very famous and much loved example is of course Breaking Bad. Although I will say personally I never really got into Breaking Bad. I did give it a go. I watched the entirety of the first season and a few of the um, successive seasons as well but it was never really my favourite and I have to say that overall having watched Ozark I do very much prefer Ozark over Breaking Bad although I know that for a lot of people it's the other way around and I fully acknowledge that Breaking Bad is a fantastic show you don't have to convince me of that I already know but just in terms of an emotional connection to the show and to the characters I never really got there so I lost interest in it pretty quickly but in the case of Ozark I think that's where it shines brighter because I really am able to get an emotional connection to these characters and speaking of the characters themselves let's just jump right into my thoughts on them this season first and foremost we have Jason Bateman portraying the character of Marty Bird and I really enjoyed this character I often 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 talk about the importance of having a charismatic lead in anything <laughs> in anything a tv show a film anything that you have it's so important that the audience is able to latch onto this character because we're going through the story with this character and in the case of Ozark we have a character who again I've said this so many times but he has a quiet intelligence to him he is much more pensive he is much more you know down to earth in terms of his mentality in terms of his outward personality of course there is that lingering sense of anger and of frustration and of fear because this entire situation is insane he is in bed with a drug lord and he is fully aware of that and sometimes you wonder if he's aware of that but oh yes he is aware of his situation he knows how crazy this thing is but at the same time his outward persona just helps calm the situation it's kind of like a balm on everything and it still provides us with an electrifying and exciting character to follow through this journey and it's because of Jay Jason Bateman's performance he has that stoicism he has that classic you know straight man act when it comes to his comedy and, he, and through his performance here he's able to adapt that and create this character who is again very low-key but still very interesting to follow in this journey I will say though specifically in reference to this season he did take a little bit of a back seat in favor of giving Wendy her time to shine but before we get to Wendy I did want to touch on the character of Ruth who's also an excellent character and very interesting to follow throughout this whole Whole series. Now at this point in the series Ruth's character arc isn't quite as explosive and dynamic as it was in season one when we were first introduced to her and she was this incredibly intelligent and completely undermined completely underrated person who was able to see further into the future than her male dominated family. But at this point in time she's proven her worth she's proven her loyalty to the birds by doing some very extreme acts and as a result they've taken her in and they've incorporated her into their business business and they've invited her into their family or at least almost because there is always that sense that she's just outside she's on the outside looking in and even though Marty and Wendy are constantly telling Ruth that she is one of them and they have incorporated her fully into their family actions speak louder than words and their actions are constantly contradicting what they say a prime example of this is of course when Frank Jr ends up beating up Ruth almost to the point of her dying and the birds refuse to retaliate in any violent way that 
Now their reasoning behind this is sound and it makes sense, but there is also that culture of an eye for an eye that the birds refuse to participate in because of course it would just escalate the whole situation. But unfortunately to someone like Ruth, who's grown up in that culture, it looks to her as though she is nowhere near as important to them as their own children, which is perhaps the truth of the situation. And Ruth rightly points out that even the threat of bringing any harm to the bird's children ended up with her father dying. And yet when it comes to her literally almost being beaten up to death, they didn't do anything to retaliate. And I think the show did a great job of building that tension gradually and showing the deterioration of that relationship gradually. And as a result, Result, by the end of the season the show has created the perfect scenario of why Ruth would end up turning towards Darlene and in an inferior show that would have just ended up as a surprise that made absolutely no sense but that isn't the case here. Whilst Marty and Ruth are excellent in this season as they have been in the previous ones this season definitely hones in on the character of Wendy. This is her time to shine because here we have a character who is slowly but surely becoming mad with power and power hungry. She is no longer satisfied with just money laundering for the cartel. She wants to be an intrinsic and integral part of the organization in order to, at least in her eyes, secure their position and secure their security. And it gets to the point where her perception of her role and her importance within the organization gets completely distorted. And throughout the season, people are constantly trying to remind Wendy that she is disposable and so is her family. There is absolutely nothing that she could possibly do in order to secure her place within Navarra's organization on a part permanent basis. Even someone like Helen, who seemed so powerful and untouchable when she was introduced into this show, she ends up being killed by Navarra in order to make that exact point that everyone is disposable regardless of their position in the organization. They can go from being an invaluable asset to a nuisance in Navarro's eyes within an instant. And I think Helen's death was the wake-up call that Wendy needed, especially considering it had come straight after Wendy had made the ultimate sacrifice of having her brother killed just so she could show her loyalty to Navarra's organization and prevent her brother from compromising that. And this coupled with the fact that Navarro barely even acknowledged the sacrifice that Wendy made when she informed him and merely dismissed it as her doing what was necessary, this should hopefully get it into Wendy's brain that she's nowhere near as valuable as she thinks she is and that that inflated ego that she developed throughout this season needs to be deflated immediately. And speaking of her inflated ego, whilst it did make for a very difficult character to root for and see sympathize with throughout this season, I think it was an excellent theme to have in the show and I think it was an excellent development for the character of Wendy and really the only way that she could go because she started off as being so pathetic and so unlikable and unsympathizable and really brought nothing to the table that the only way that we could actually redeem her and make her into a respectable character is turn her into a bit of an antagonist and once again the show does an excellent job of building this gradually and one of the motifs that they use in order to represent Wendy's character development is of course the telephone because at first Helen almost exclusively has access to Navarro. In fact we barely even hear his name at the beginning. He's mostly referenced by Helen as my client but then when we get on further into the season Wendy starts getting more access to him. She starts being able to speak to him on the phone and then they have that personal meeting on the plane where Helen even says that that was one of the longest meetings that he has ever taken in person and the fact that it was with Wendy kind of goes straight to her head and inflates her ego like I was saying and then we even get to the point when Navarro is calling Wendy directly and asking her for advice and asking her about omens and all sorts of things so it feels like it's becoming more of a personal relationship but at the same time there are constant reminders that it is not and in terms of the character itself it makes sense because we do know that she used to work in politics and used to work in political campaigns so it makes sense that she would be attracted to that type of power even if it isn't a completely different illegal setting. But once again, hopefully the death of Helen and of her brother will realign Wendy's position and allow her to see once again that she is not in control here and she possibly will never be. Speaking of Wendy's brother, he is a brand new character that is introduced this season and it is alluded to that Wendy does have a brother in the previous seasons. In the first season at least, she does make that comment that she's afraid that her son is becoming so much like her brother and what if it's hereditary? So there is this underlying idea that perhaps her brother has a serious mental illness that she is afraid of her son developing. And finally in this season that throwaway comment becomes a whole story arc and we get to be introduced to the character of Ben. And at first I was pretty skeptical of this character because it seemed like he was just this overhyped puppy who was 
slobbering on everything and ruining everything, creating chaos in this carefully constructed operation that the birds have going on. But then it became clear that that was very much intentional because the brother has bipolar disorder. And once again, the show does an excellent job of portraying the gradual deterioration of Ben's mental health after he decides not to take his medication in order to pursue a sexual relationship with Ruth. Which by the way, I didn't love, like I didn't love their relationship. I thought it was good, especially near the end. I was convinced at that point. But at the beginning, I just felt like it was so antagonistic. It was even more antagonistic than her relationship with Frank Jr., which I also thought had a little bit of sexual tension there, but that was quickly proven wrong. But anyway, I really enjoyed the fact that the show didn't make Ben go crazy just for the sake of being crazy. It showed the gradual shift in his mental state and the fact that he stopped taking his medication in combination with the craziness, the insanity of the situation that the birds live in did eventually mean that his mental state completely deteriorated and he started having like manic attacks or manic fits. And this of course made him incredibly unreliable and unstable to have around the delicate operation that the birds were running. Now I think Tom Pelfrey did a very good job of depicting this character. He showed his cheekiness and his likability as well as showing the deterioration of his mental state. I can't speak to the accuracy of the representation of bipolar disorder. I'm not very familiar with that side of things but I will say that the way that he depicted this character did help in terms of building the character arc of Ben and of Wendy herself who of course had that sibling bond, that sibling relationship with him and you could definitely tell that they had a history there. Even a history with Marty although less so understandably. But Ben and Wendy definitely felt like brother and sister which is saying something considering that before this season he was nothing but a throwaway comment. So now let's get into the bad side of things. I wouldn't say there's anything outrightly terrible about this show. It's a very very good show but there are a few loose threads that I would say could use a bit of neatening up, a bit of tidying up to make it absolutely perfect. Firstly I already talked about the relationship between Ruth and Ben which wasn't my favourite and the fact that I got a bit confused or a bit misled when it came to the relationship of Ruth and Frank Jr and I would say that he was part of a bigger problem when it comes to this show which is that I don't really take a lot of the antagonists seriously. If there's one antagonist that I certainly took seriously and certainly respected throughout the show it would be Navarro because he most definitely proved himself to be quite the villain in this season and in fact Marty ends up being tortured this season. For the first time he ends up on Navarro's territory and sees the very real consequences of what they are doing although he has been in a hostage situation before so it's kind of like old news to him but it was definitely an upgrade to what he experienced. Actually he's been through a lot this Marty. <laughs> but yeah, I had no problems being convinced of Navarro's evilness. You can check that box. But when it comes to some of the other antagonistic entities that we have on this show, it's less the case. Firstly, we have the FBI. Now, I don't know about you guys, maybe it's just me, but I am so done with law enforcement. <laughs> Correction, I am so done when it comes to law enforcement in these types of shows because they are so they tend to be the worst part of the show. They are as dry as cardboard. I will say that Agent Roy Petty from season one and two was the exception to this because he was just a full on maniac. Like he had issues of his own. You could tell that he was one bad decision away from being on the other side of prison bars. And that made him a very interesting agent to follow throughout the investigation. But in this season, we have Agent Maya, whose only defining character trait is the fact that she is very heavily pregnant and I am so scared for her and her unborn child. And even though she does have a few interesting interactions with Marty and they have a very interesting relationship where they're both trying to play and turn each other, but at the same time, you can see that in another life, they perhaps would have been genuine friends. But aside from that, she's a pretty bland character and she's not that intimidating as an FBI agent, especially following Petty. And secondly, the Kansas City mob never feels like a big threat either. And in the case of Frank Jr., he's just a laughing stock. And maybe it's because our perception of him is very much influenced by what Ruth thinks of him and she thinks very lowly of him. So of course we don't take him seriously. But even after he commits that act against Ruth, I never really take him seriously anyways. I just see him as a spoiled brat. And finally, Darlene also loses a lot of the venom that they injected into her in the second season. Having a child to take care of and another one to sleep with, 
seems to have softened her and made her less of a threat on the show at least until we get to the point where she shoots frank jr in the balls that's definitely a return to form for her and really the way that she orchestrated that whole scenario was pretty masterful the way that she took advantage of ruth after hearing that she had fallen out with the birds and convinced ruth to come into her side because she would be able to provide her with the revenge that she sought i think was genius and i think it does an excellent job of setting up some plot points for season four where we'll hopefully be able to see Ruth become an antagonist once again. So overall I really enjoyed Ozark season three. When it comes to this series in general I would say that the strongest seasons so far have been one and three. Number two kind of wavered a bit for me personally but for some reason Ozark is able to entrance me. It's able to hold my attention in a way that Breaking Bad wasn't. I think it's just because I've been able to connect to the characters especially Ruth and Marty and the kids to some extent. They're a bit annoying at times. <laughs> and a bit irrelevant I didn't even mention them in my review anyways as for season three of Ozark I'm going to give it an eight out of ten so that's it from me now that I've told you guys what my thoughts on Ozark are it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of the series down in the comments below please be sure to subscribe to catch new videos coming up thank you guys so so much for watching I really really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one bye